This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex. Hi, everybody. This is the Ramble. We're going till midnight tonight from New York, New York. Larry Brubbles Brown sits out in California trying to earn a living as a comedian. How's it going, yeah. Larry? Well, it's first time in the year. I didn't work on New Year's, so that's a... Wait a minute, you didn't work on New Year's? No, and I had uh, I could have gone out to Salt Lake City to work with Rob Schneider, which I almost did. And now I'm kind of glad I didn't because of this Southwest debacle. <laughs> There's people that have been stuck in airports for days now. So. Yeah, no, you're lucky you didn't go. But, uh, you know, I was, I was telling Marjorie, because I, I was talking to Buddy Love and his wife, and uh, she called the show or something on uh, New Year's Eve. And she said, oh, she's home alone because Buddy's out doing his New Year's gig. Okay? And we started talking about the fact that, you know, if you're, I remember that any girlfriend who went with me had to expect that New Year's was going to be spent with me working. You know? Because that's mm-hmm. the most money-making time of the year for a person in show business. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if you went out to do Rob Schneider, you would have gotten paid a nice amount of money. Yeah. So, whatever. Although, I, from what I hear, that uh, New Year's is kind of not becoming what people aren't going out like they used to. Well, you know, the, the, the COVID changed everything because it changed our habit pattern. And so that may be the reason why. That could be, yeah. But uh, yeah. it always was a good money night, and uh, the best shows we had were I had was working with you. Uh, well, I always Palace paid. Fine I, arts. I always paid top dollar. I I just always did because Gary and I, Gary was my business manager. You know, always felt, and I always felt that I was. I I felt I was in show business more than I was in radio. Okay. And that if I was working New Year's Eve, I'd want to get paid good money, too, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so I always paid the top dollar, and Gary always insisted on it, you know? So we, we, we paid probably more than you would have ever made with anybody else, and it wasn't to, get, oh, yeah. wasn't to get you people away from other people. We only had to meet that price, you know? But, you know, when you always waited for that call from Gary, right, where he said, here's what we're yeah, going yeah. <laughs> to pay you? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. We did, you did the Palace Fine Arts for a few years, and uh, the first New Year's show I worked with you was 86. Mm-hmm. And it was, it, for some reason, it was, I can't remember. It was in Mountain View. It was an odd venue. I forget what it was called. Yeah, we didn't do the Palace of Fine Arts till a couple of years later. Yeah. 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 And, and do you remember how much I paid you? Yeah, I Now, did. remember, this is in 1986 money, okay? Yeah. It was $1,500. That's a, even today, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. That's not bad, yeah. Well, you weren't for, the opening for, act. You weren't the... You weren't for a 10-minute set, yeah. Yeah, for a 10-minute set, $1,500. Yeah, but God, I was, I was giving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, I I had a headliner on that show, and who knows how much I paid him, you know? Well, back then, that covered my rent for five months. So, So, yeah, and I I just appreciated comics, and I, you know, in those days, um, uh, you know, basically, you, you, uh, a comedian would make, uh, oh, what, $300 for a gig like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I just never, I never, I never underpaid the people. And that's why you all wanted to do my shows. And it wasn't done mm-hmm. to make them do my shows. It was paid because that's what I felt somebody was worth, you know. And I still do. Except for you, Larry. I paid you way <laughs> too much. Paid you way too much. Overpaid. And then you worked most of my other New Year's shows, didn't you? 
I did. I worked uh, 95, 96, 97 at the Palace of Fine Arts. Yeah. Those were fun shows, uh, although... Yeah. And I think 97 was my last one because I wasn't on the radio the next year. Right. Yeah. So, you know. Um, so that was, you know, there's quite a few quite a few years you did it. Did I, that did, was a sweet venue, though, because it was two blocks from your house and like ten from mine. So. I used to say that it was my two-block walk, and I would walk that block and walk home with $10,000 in my pocket, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, th- th- it was a good really, night. <laughs> well, because any any show I did sold out, and those always sold out. And we did two shows. We did an early show, and we did a late. We did the midnight mm-hmm. show, right? And um, um, I, I, you know, th- that 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 was I. So there was a lot of money coming in from those two shows. You know, and we had to pay the venue and so on. But it's a beautiful. If anybody has ever seen scenes of San Francisco and they show what looks like a temple. How do we describe it, you know? Uh, it's a big domed building. But that's not where, where you hold the, the shows. That's just the centerpiece. It's outdoors. And that's the Palace of Fine Arts. And it was part of the 1916 Pan American Exposition. Am I right about that? Yeah, to get that was to get people to come back to San Francisco after the earthquake of '06 because everyone was and, terrified. And, and it was uh, built in the mar- what is now the marina, which they built up the ground and everything with uh, what do you call it? Uh, rubble from the 1906 earthquake. In other words, they took all the rubble and made that whole area. It used to just be water, right? That's why yeah. when we have the earthquake in what? When do we have it? 1989. Uh, we had a problem called liquefaction in which parts of the, of the marina, water started seeping through because that was all built on, on, uh, very, on rubble, basically. So, rubble and landfill, yeah. Rubble and landfill. But that sounds like a, a lawyer's firm. Sounds like a legal team. <laughs> legal team. <laughs> Rubble and landfill. Rubble and landfill. Got problems with your wife? Getting a divorce? Come to <laughs> Rubble and Landfill. <laughs> of course, the best name ever was my, my I had my lawyer um, who was uh, um, Fred Reamer. I remember, yeah, yeah. Which is a great, uh, I've said this before, a great name for a lawyer. I mean, you couldn't get a better name for a lawyer than Reamer. Uh, because before I had Mr. Reamer, uh, this is, I'm not lying when I tell this story. I've told this before and I'll say it again because this is a great story. Uh, before Fred Reamer, I had Joel Turtle. Oh. Now, you don't get much fear out of people when you say, listen, you, you screw with me, and you're going to have to deal with my lawyer, Mr. Turtle. <laughs> We're turning the turtle loose. <laughs> I'm going to turn the turtle loose on you. <laughs> Bring them on, okay? But when you went to them and you said, you're going to have to deal with my lawyer, Mr. Reamer, that struck fear in their hearts, you know. And, and he so, had that, didn't he? He had like wild hair and always looked like he was sunburned. And oh, yeah, yeah. He, and he, all he did was he was a lawyer for drug dealers. I always liked him for that. That was it. <laughs> drug dealers and me, okay? Uh, and, and most of the stuff he did for me pro bono, he didn't charge me for it. We were okay. just good friends. But anyway, uh, Fred, uh, Fred died a few years ago. Yeah. Um, uh, but he, his mother, was a divorce lawyer. And she had a firm with another guy. And it was the divorce, I'm not kidding you, the divorce a, a team or divorce lawyers team of, hold on to your hats, everybody, <laughs> Reamer and Skinner. <laughs> So you know that was that was the divorce people you wanted to go to, boy. Reamer, Reamer and Skinner. That's hilarious. Can't beat that, you know. But uh, I I miss I miss him. He was really a good guy. 
He was a good. Was it you that said you talked to you called a lawyer once to say happy birthday? Well, that was Mr. that was Mr. Turtle. That was Mr. Turtle. I, that was I, Turtle. Yeah, I called him uh, to wish him a happy birthday, and he said thank you very much. And the next month, Gary gets a bill for it. You know, what did you do with uh, Joel on uh, Monday? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, I don't know. Oh, I wished him a happy birthday. He said, that son of a bitch. So he charged you two hours, probably. Yeah, I think Gary called him and said, hey, he called you to wish you a happy birthday. You know, I'm sure <laughs> what happened, I'm not going to hold it against Joel, but I'm sure what happens is every time he de dealt with one of his clients and he talked with them for five minutes, he would write it down and then later on that month, he didn't remember what he talked to you about. He just said, ah, oh, I got to bill him for that. You know, so. I'll give him <laughs> that, okay? In fact, I don't, I don't even know if Joel's still alive. I think, yes, he is. Although I'm, I'm, I'm pretty old now. I'm 83. I turned 83. And um, uh, so how old could Joel be? Man, he'd have to be older than me. So I don't know, but. Anyway, Mr. Well, you've Raymond. dealt with many lawyers. You had your uh, landmark rental case. <laughs> well, my landmark rental case, but but I, you know, my biggest my biggest case was um, I'm trying to remember what it was now. It was um, I had to hire a lawyer. Oh, I know. It was when I left um, the um, uh, the quake, and I hadn't yet gone to Live 105. But they, um, and I remember there was a time, there was a period of time where I wasn't working at all, but it was because uh, the old, the quake was still paying me a salary. And my salary at that point was one of the largest in San Francisco, and this wasn't that high, $125,000 a year. And I still had two years left on my contract. And they, and wow. they didn't have to pay it off because... Uh, I had a thing in my contract that said I have the right to do whatever I want to on my show. In other words, I have total control over my show. You can't tell me what to do with it. And they were trying to tell me, well, now you got to just play nothing but music. And I said, no, nope, you're violating my contract. Well, they decided to violate the contract. And then I went to Joel and I told him about this. And he said, he said well, you know something? He says, I'm a good lawyer, but I ain't that good. Okay. You got to get the best. So he sent me down to L.A. and he got me a lawyer. I can't remember the lawyer's name now, but he was a major, major show business lawyer who uh, had money in the Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, that's how big a lawyer he was. Mm -hmm. And he he got this thing settled for me in about a minute and a half. Really? Huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, we paid him 20 grand retainer. But man, it was worth every penny because then I could just walk away from that radio station and they had to keep paying me. So then, Great. Here's, here's the story you're gonna love. Then the Live 105 decided they wanted me, Ed, Ed Cramp, really good guy, and decided he wanted me. And um, he got a hold of the old people who have currently held my contract and said, look, I'll make a deal with you. He wanted to make a show, a, a, a sports deal, because he loves sports. So he was going to make a sports deal, and the sports deal was is that they would pay 40% of my salary, and Ed would pay 60% of my salary, until such a time as I got the same ratings or more that I got at at uh, at the quake. At which point, uh, they wouldn't owe any more money. Okay, you get what I'm saying here. In other words, yeah. if if I beat that number, all right. So they did not. They didn't didn't want to do that. So they took the forty percent deal, but we're not going with the until. Uh, oh no! Wait a minute. They want. He wanted to do 50%, and they wanted to do 40%, and they said, we'll do 40%, but we don't want to do the deal about him meeting the same ratings or whatever. So they went, okay, we'll pay 60%, you'll pay 40%. So first book, rating book out, I beat my number. They would have been off the hook for 40%, but they had to keep paying it for the next two years. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah. That's how stupid they were. So, you know. Um, also, the other great story out of all of that was they were trying to say what a terrible person I was, okay? You know. And at, at these meetings, the lawyers would get together all huddled in the room, my lawyers and their lawyers, and uh, their lawyers went, uh, at one meeting, they said, you know, I hear Alex has a drinking problem. Now, the one thing that you can't say about me is that I'm a drinker. You no. never see me, and you never ever saw me drunk, right? Me either, no. You may have seen me stoned, but not drunk. <laughs> All right. So uh, my lawyer said, are you kidding? Alex doesn't even drink. Well, that was what was known as, I learned all these terms. I've, I've gotten a legal education just going through this stuff. Secondary defamation. And what secondary defamation is, is if you um, say something like, Alex, I hear Alex is a, is a drinker. That's secondary defamation. Because what you're doing is you're putting the idea out there that I am a drinker when I'm not. And you can get a lot of money for secondary defamation, and that's the reason they backed off and kept paying me. So, you know, I mean, that whole story was a very, very adventuresome time in my life, you know, and uh, dictated what would go on with my life for the next 10, 15 years. So, anyway. That's crazy, Jesus. Yeah, really crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's the story of Alex and, uh, and, and my career in San Francisco. That was February of 86 when you came back to the new Live 105. And, uh, yeah, I, I, w I was let go, and then they brought me back. That was part of the adventure, and they had to keep paying me during that time, by the way. And then, um, uh, let me see, then, when it, then, then I was out of work again. You know, then I went over to CNET Radio. It's all it, quite an adventure. I didn't come out here till 2014, 15, 13. So, yeah. And I've been here ever since. So. That's New York, by the way, folks, in case you never heard this show before and don't know the history of my fabulous life. Serious and... Uh, yeah. How long is that going to last? What do you mean? Uh, serious? Seriously, someone was saying, like, that's a satellite radio, and radio's kind of shaky to begin with. How long, what, they wonder what their future didn't look good, is what they were saying. Well, uh, yeah, the techno, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, they certainly, they their stock has gone nowhere over the last, I got rid of my stock years ago. I turned it over. It was, a, it was one of those uh, 401Ks that I still had, and I just sold it out and got just stock for it. And uh, they just, they keep hovering at the same stock for the last, I don't know, four or five years. Terrible. Yeah, I've got a few shares. I think it's like, it's been like 650 for like years. Oh, no, <laughs> it's it's less than that. It's like 615 now, something like that. Okay. Why did you buy it? It's in my IRA for some reason. I have no idea. Oh, it was in your IRA. Who handled yeah, it? Yeah, I didn't have many shares, but I picked some up this years ago. Yeah, yeah. Why, why did why did you uh, why, who who handles your IRAs? You do handle, them, right? Yeah, it was my pick. I just thought uh, at what? the time, I just thought they they had that big opening, and uh, I thought they're going to be huge. And well, you know, it it still is kind of futuristic. I mean, you know comes down off a satellite you know but so does everything else your phone calls come down off a satellite um it, i just i feel that uh, they you know to begin with they still call themselves sirius xm radio and i don't know why you know radio is dead <laughs> if i owned a radio station i'd be unloading it right now you know who's unloading a lot of things? Uh, Disney is thinking of getting rid of ESPN. They feel it's not a big money maker for them, not compared to the DC, the the uh, Marvel universe, or this, you know, the Star Wars uh -huh. pictures they own and things like that. 
And uh, radio stations, a lot of radio operators are thinking about getting their, rid of their radio stations and just putting them all online because they, they're not getting listenership through the air like they were getting, but they're getting just as many people listening to those stations online. So they're thinking, really? well, why okay. should we have to pay to keep this transmitter going and paying for this license and all of that, you know, when we could just go straight internet? So there, there's, a, there's a move towards that. But, yeah. you know, radio will not, radio is actually very good. You know, I mean, as a medium, I prefer it over any other. And people are going to say, well, why, Alex? You know, it's such an old, antiquated thing. But if you think about it, this old, antiquated thing has the best way of transmitting themselves uh, because you take a radio signal and within a given area, it goes everywhere. Everybody has access to it. With the Internet, you have to have one stream for everybody that's going to listen to it. It's an entirely different thing. Now, while it will go as far as you want it to go, provided you have the ability to pick it up, okay, which means you have to have a computer, you got to have an iPhone or something like that, and you got to pay for the signal every month, and, uh, and you know, you have to pay to listen to it. AM radio, FM radio, you didn't pay to listen to it. All right. You know, so, you know, it shouldn't die as a medium, but it's never sold itself well. And, and in, uh, in the 50s, radio was in trouble. And radio was in trouble because television came in. And so what did radio do? Radio used to do radio shows. You know, I remember the last one I ever heard that was a big one was called The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead. And it had a big orchestra and everything like that. That was the kind of radio they did. Come the 50s, they got out of that. And radio decided we have to be something for a television age, and they went and started playing music. Stations had done this in the past, but not effectively. And so they became music stations, and then later on talk stations. In other words, they redefined themselves, and radio had a great heyday in the 50s. Um, they have not re redone themselves for this age. You know, um, and and that's where they're kind of falling short, is they they just haven't adapted for this day and age. So, you know, what can I say? Yeah, you you cannot get an AM uh, radio in an electric car these days. So, uh, mm, uh, Tesla, you can't get one. Well, yeah, and and with, for good reason. Nobody's listening to it anymore. I mean, are you not going to buy a Tesla because they don't have an AM radio? <laughs> Do they have an FM radio? I think they have the FM. Something about the AM, they said actually they've got so much electronics in that car, it kind of interferes with the, some of the uh, functions. AM interferes with it? That's, that's what they said, yeah. I, I would think the worst thing that would interfere with a Tesla is Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> My, if we have to talk about people who in the last year took their worth and dumped it in the ground, it would either be uh, Elon Musk or Kanye West. You know? I mean, amazing what, what how, how Elon has just ruined things for himself by this Twitter acquisition, which is the stupidest acquisition in the world. I mean, he was doing electric cars, which could help save the planet, and he's SpaceX, which is definitely going to save the planet, right? And then he goes and buys Twitter? Why? You know, there's no importance in that. You know, I, I never could figure it out. But that's... They definitely overpaid for it, yeah. Yeah, definitely overpaid. So if I had to talk about the stupidest guy this year, it would probably be Elon Musk. Yeah, so. I asked a question the other day, and I'll, I'll ask it of you. Uh, who was the worst person on the planet last year? On the planet! <laughs> The worst person. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> and, uh, and I got pretty much the same answer from everybody. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. is he American? No. I guess a lot of people probably would say Putin. That's it. That's the that's the number one answer. Ding 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 ding. You know. 
Uh, yeah, no, he, he, they named him the worst person in the world. I said that, and second would probably be Kanye. You know, I mean, what, what a terrible human being Kanye has become. Not that he probably wasn't a terrible person before, but, you know. Well, I can't believe that he, they said he was worth a billion dollars. It's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it was worth almost two billion. Now he's worth about 400,000. Yeah. <laughs> 400 million, excuse me, 400 Four, million. How, that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah boo-hoo, you're worth 400 million. You can fuck up your life completely and still be worth 400 million. What's that all about? Anyway, hey, listen, we run out of time again. We have. But when you're having fun like this, you know, it goes by really fast. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Alex, and Happy New Year. You too. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, good, 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 good. We're, uh, we're uh, ready to go here with the rest of our show. Thank you, Larry. We appreciate it. He's with us every week, and we, as I say with he and Steve Kravitz and Albert Reynoso and all the other people that uh, join our show, uh, we thank them very much, okay? Uh, for their time, their energies, and uh, their talent. Okay. Anyway, let me see. Let me get these people on really quick here because I noticed that there were some phony people trying to get on for a while, but they're not trying to get on right now. So here we are. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's Jeff. And, oh, hey, Mark Thurner's calling. So we'll admit Mark. Okay. And uh, there's Charlie Wallace. And there is... Uh, 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 Brian Neary and uh, Ann Nunn, Vernon, and Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. Hello, how you doing? <coughs> anyway, uh, let me clear my throat. Bub Bubbles had a good uh, a good joke about the the whole football player mm -hmm. thing. He said Bengals were penalized 15 yards for roughing the ticker. <laughs> for roughing of, the ticker. Instead of roughing the kicker, yeah, roughing. Oh, you the see, I don't know those kind of terms, yeah. so it didn't mean anything to me. Hey, yeah. Mark Thorner, been a while. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Oh, it's very sunny down there in uh, in uh, Florida. Look at that. Is that a Florida shot? Yes, it is. It is really. Yeah. Wow, and it's kind of like is that a is that a rainbow, a white rainbow? Yes, it is. Is there such a thing as a white <laughs> rainbow? Well, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I've seen them twice now, so I guess so. Really? So, because, yeah. you know, rainbow is usually just a spectrum of the colors. Is uh, You know, the light comes through whatever, the rain and so on. Well, you also need a fog condition for it to happen as well. So a white one could be fog. But it, it, there it was. There it <laughs> like, was. Oh, okay. Okay. And I imagine you took the picture. Yeah, yeah, of course he did. Um, uh, he hello, Josh. How are you this evening, my friend? Doing okay. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, let's see here. Uh, we're losing Jeff. He's he's, he's like uh, just the top of his head now. Like yep. Kilroy was here. If you just put your hands up like this, nobody. Does anybody remember Kilroy was here? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, everybody yeah. used to put him on walls and stuff. That was the prime graffiti. That mm -hmm. we had going for us. So, yeah. Did we know. put hands on him too? What? Did we put hands on you know, him? Yeah, he was like, he was like this. Yeah. Okay. And the nose was there and then the, the hands were there. I guess. I... From the 1950s. Yeah. Uh, the 1950s. That goes back to the 40s and maybe even yeah. the 30s. Mm -hmm. wow. Really? Yeah. My best it's just you on Facebook, Alex. What? It's just you on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Sorry about that, yep. folks. You want to see the people who are here? There they go. You know, mm -hmm. I remember everything. Except they don't look up at the picture to see, you know. Uh, I have a limited uh, landscape here to fit everything in, and then, you know, I'm lucky I... No, well, there we go. There's all of you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, folks. Now you can see the rainbow, the white <clears throat> rainbow. That's oh, yeah, cool. that's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. A lot of things you can do with a green screen, huh? No, there aren't a lot of things you can do with a green screen. The only <laughs> thing you can do with a green screen is put a picture on it. Right. Yeah. That That's the only point. thing you can do with a green screen. 
By the way, do you have a green screen there, uh, Josh? Do I? I'm not Josh. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Mark. Do you no, have... this is this is built in. Uh, I can do this within uh, Zoom. You don't need a green screen. Yeah, well, that's very good that you did it that well because uh, usually the the green screen that Zoom does, although it's getting better and better. There's always kind of a little shadow and things like that, and but you seem to have gotten a perf You probably have a lot of light on you right now, right? Well, not really. It's a chandelier with LED replacements. Oh well, <laughs> you're, you're lit well, so it's probably yeah. not. Or maybe they've just it's changed the logarithm on that because I don't use the you know the non-green screen version. I mean, I can change this to non-green screen. Let's see what happens here if I if I do. Let me see here. Here we go, and we go here, and then uh, we go over here to background and effects, and then I say, I don't have a green screen. Let's see what happens. Well, actually, that looks pretty good now. Yeah. Yeah, they look, they did a much, they're doing a much better job of it. Yeah. They really got this going pretty damn good. So because, we can all do it then. Awesome. Let me do something. Because watch. I'll, I, I'm, <laughs> wait a minute. I'll go to a green screen where I say I have a green screen and let's see what happens. Okay. All right. I just did it and it doesn't change. No. It's about mm -hmm. the same. Well, I'll be a son of a bitch. Ah, they've improved it. God, can you imagine any of these companies improving anything? You want to hear the greatest, uh, the greatest uh, ripoff of all time? It's, it's not what you'd really call it. You must still have the old Zoom there. Uh, because yours That's looks yours looks crappy. <sighs> anyway, maybe maybe it's the head. You know, you and Mark, the head is so perfect that it just yeah, nice yeah. And clean. You know, the hair messes everything up. Yeah. Oh, that that could be it. But anyway, uh, uh, here's something that really I I read and it's bothered me. And it's only a dollar a month, okay? But HBO is upping their price. HBO Max, a dollar. A month. Now that's not a lot of money. It's pocket change. It's you don't mm -hmm. think about a dollar, but when you think that they're taking a lot of their shows off and they've eliminated <laughs> 256 cartoons, and then they have the gall to charge a dollar more. I mean, who are these people at Discovery? Absolute morons. Yeah. And that's one dollar times how many subscribers? Yeah. Well, they figure they've got. They, they want to try and make three billion dollars back they want to cut three billion dollars out of the budget and that would be you know cnn hbo max uh it would be anything that uh, warner brothers pictures okay uh and so on and so uh they um um when you say a dollar a subscriber they have about i think 80, maybe 80 million subscribers. I don't know. Am I right or wrong? I, I, I had, let's just, that, let's say that just for the sake of argument. So that's $80 million more a year, a month. A month. Yeah. yeah. So that's $1.2 billion a year. Still blow me, you know, come on, come on. You know, I mean, they, they took off, they're taking off a lot of shows. Uh, Westworld is not coming back. Never, uh, the Nevers is never is not coming back. Um, oh, they're giving us The Last of Us this weekend, which is promises to be a, a good goer. But knowing Discovery, they'll cancel it after its first year, even if it's doing well. You know, I mean, it's just it's just uh, these companies that are taking it over are such cheapskates, and they expect so much. You know, I mean. Uh, I'm sorry. And then they go out and they fire people, too. You know? I mean, how many people has HBO let, laid off as soon as Discovery came in? Um, and I don't appreciate companies doing that. I think it's wrong. Uh, who, 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 was, who, who was the latest one we had that Am Amazon laid off 18,000 people? Wow. Yeah. You know. I no guess, wonder my packages are getting here quicker. I don't get it. I'm, I'm, it, it, it don't, if you have people. to explain the joke, it wasn't worth telling. It wasn't a joke. That's all, oh, oh, what do you mean? It's, they, they're getting here faster. They are. 
They're just, I don't know why they're getting here. Maybe the holidays are over or something. I don't know. That's probably the reason why. Good answer. Okay. Number one answer on the board. Yep, that's it. Holidays. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So um, uh, let's see here. What, anything happening in the news, Josh? Josh kind of watches. and You don't seem like you watch the news. You just have an opinion on it. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I really watch news, so to speak, like sitting down and watching the news. But, you know, I like, you know, read, uh, catch some radio when I'm driving and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll kind of seek out information rather than sitting and you watching. You mean you do that old fashioned <laughs> thing about reading? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, there, there really isn't, you know news programming really and i don't like local news either because it's really stupid well so. you know the you know the thing that uh, that that bothered me today when i was watching the news the the, the 6 30 news on nbc this guy has been arrested in the murder of those f four college students okay <laughs> now quite frankly i have no idea whether he did it or didn't do it i wasn't there i don't know the the, the uh, I know the background of the story, but I don't. I'm not privileged to all the inside information about what they have, making him uh, the person who did it. So I'm ready to sit here and listen to the evidence. All right. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, NBC isn't because tonight they ran a story in which a we we went to a person who knew this guy when he was a teacher at the college, and he says that uh, he was uh, a kind of getting weird after the murders he was just acting up straight and th this was the whole story is that the guy said oh he was giving all a's to people you know well i wish i had him as a teacher anyway uh but they're they're all going on conjecture and this guy hasn't he hasn't yeah. even pleaded guilty or not guilty no contest no he hasn't no. no, not even close. They haven't even gotten to that point where he's supposed to plead. Mm -hmm. that, that'll be in June. Read the newspapers. Okay, mm -hmm. anyway. A couple of days ago, they, they had the, they had like a white car going by, and they said that was his white Elantra, and they kept like, there's like a screen. Mm -hmm. This little, you can see this speck of a car go by, and they zoom up, and you can't tell what kind of car it is or anything. Yeah, I mean. They, uh, made, it, they made it like a 20-minute yeah. story. Oh, he came back to the scene of the crime, and then here's a psychiatrist, and he's you know, talking about well, how murderers do that, and it's like, oh, my God. Call, call me an asshole, but I believe in the presumption of innocence until proven guilty in a court of law. And none so of that has Kevin happened. McCarthy. What? So does Kevin McCarthy. Oh, oh yeah, 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 with uh, what's his name? Santos. Santos. Well, he's, oh. not, he's not saying that exactly. He's saying the guy was elected by his constituency, and it's his constituency's job to get rid of him. Uh, and uh, his constituency is saying, quit. Just stop, you know? <laughs> and I only saw one guy. Here was, here, here was the guy on TV. He was on, I think it was the local news when it was asked, or maybe it was the national news. I can't remember. Anyway, they asked a bunch of people in his his constituency, and they said, uh, uh, we think he should uh, quit. We think he should get out of, out of Dodge because he lied to us. And the last guy they had on, oh, this was on MSNBC, because they wanted to be magnanimous about all of this, was a guy who said, well, you know, having a liar in there is better than having a Democrat. Well, that. he shouldn't have the right to vote this guy. You know, I mean, that's not what it amounts to. So... You know, I, it, it was a kind of amazing uh, what, what's happening there. I, I guess I'm surprised the Republican Party, from where he's at, they're down on him. They want him to quit. Why can't they just replace him with another They Republican? can't replace him. He's been elected. Oh. And he's been sworn in. Am I right, Josh? Yeah, he's been sworn in. I mean, so they sort of missed an opportunity there. I mean... Uh... I believe they still have the power under their current rules package to expel members, you know. So yes, but they have two to vote, though. Um, it, they could take it, that step, you it, know. It, if, but he if said they it wanted to take it to the house. Yeah, but it takes. He's, he said, uh, uh, Vernon said, a two-thirds vote, and, and and it probably does, right? I mean, I I don't, um, you know, remember the specific, but I'm I'm sure that sounds right. That normally something like that 
is going to take more than a simple majority. I mean, I'm sure McCarthy, Democrats would, you know, be willing to, you know, lend a hand in that. McCarthy um, has to let it come up for a vote. He won't. Yeah, vote. That's, right. I mean, it's 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 that's just being. I'm sure it could be done. It's just being blocked by, you know, their party leadership. Well, uh, there are several because they're not right. interested in the bad press or or whatever, you know. Um, and they probably want his vote. You know, I mean, the, the thing is, is they have a very small majority. And if he were expelled and left the House, they would be without that member for a while. I don't know what the process is. And uh, where is he from? Is it Virginia? Or, no, or, he, no, he's from New York. New York. New York. Oh, I'm sorry. Special I don't election. know if the governor. I, want, I just want to say this, a, this is proof that even New Yorkers election. can be morons, you know. Yeah, I mean they'd they'd have to have a special election, but I don't know if the government or if the governor can appoint like a, a temporary Congress person nope. until the special election is held. And if they do, that your your governor is a Democrat, so that's what I'm saying. I mean, they're he not, could. You know. Let's let's say Santos died. Let's just say, which is you know, what a great thought. And now let's say Santos died. All right. Uh, then could the governor replace him, or could not somebody? In New York. No, not New York. Okay. Not anywhere. It's in the country. Now, if if a senator died, she could because we right. did. The senator's different. Yeah. Senator wasn't even elected until. Uh, well, I mean, when 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 Hillary Clinton Clinton gave up her senatorship of New York, mm -hmm. uh, the governor appointed Hillebrand. Right. Okay. So yeah, I think the the House rather. side's Gillibrand. a little. Uh, the House side's a little specific, you know, I think amongst different states. So, you know, I mean, in the end, if they really didn't want him there, I mean, there are remedies for it, you know, and I, I would assume that there are in-state remedies that the people of New York in that district could undertake, uh, you know, but, um, and they're probably just not well, that he could be on there are several crimes they say he can be charged with yeah uh, I mean, that's but let, let, if they charge him with a crime then it's got to go through, he they can't kick him out till he's been convicted and by that time yeah. they already elected a new congressman from long island yeah, that's true. right it's possible yeah i so, mean that's what i mean is i think they're uh it's only two years maybe we can just yeah. live with this guy and uh you know he could leave yeah, and they're... trump can take his place yeah, right. Their uh, their majority is so small that, you know, I I don't I I'm being seriously, you know, I don't know if they want to take a chance with one less vote, you know, because it's that's what it is. It's one less vote. Um, hmm. and I would assume that you know they probably have wrangled him some to ensure that his vote is always whatever McCarthy says it will be. Uh, probably threatened him with that, you know, outside of the public forum, but, you know, and said, you know, I'm going to keep you on, but you're only going to vote for me and the things that mm. I say for now or whatever, you know, because he just, he can't afford to lose any votes, but he obviously is going to lose votes on certain legislation because, you know, he has a lot of people that don't like him and their party is fairly fractured and, it has a couple different splits and wings and, mm. you know, little caucuses here and there that all want their own whatever. So I I think they're really, they're so interested in their own agenda that they'll allow a incompetent, when's the day when's the gate when's, when, when's the day to have a come, seat in Congress? When, when's the day going to come when the agenda is just serving the public? Well, I mean, it's it may come well, back one day, but we're you, you we're don't not wait a minute. You're getting you're right getting you're, mean, getting you know, they, you're getting a naysay a from uh, Mark Thorner who just nodded his head. No, you don't think that day's yeah. ever going to come, right, Mark? Me either. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I thought in my lifetime I would never see the Berlin Wall fall or live to see a a subway Ooh. series so or maybe, or live to see marijuana legal. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mark. But um, who knows? Maybe I'll be proven wrong again. But uh, that's it's, the big problem. It's not going in the right direction. <laughs> you know, it's not going. I mean, we've always had. I mean, Mark brings it up all the time to. Uh, not Mark, but uh, um, uh, Josh brings it up to me all the time, and that is that we've had times that were pretty bad 
in the history of this country. Uh, I mean, he could probably start listing them for you and going all the way back to George Washington, you know, and the problems he had. Uh, but nothing has been as divisive, I think. Is, has anything ever been this divisive, um, Josh? Well, yeah, I think we've had previous, you know, uh, times, you know, like I said, you know, the, before the decade of the 1850s leading up to the Civil War was all out. Okay. You know, oh. daily animosity. I mean, there were literally fights on the House floor. I mean, mm. and I'm not just didn't, talking didn't somebody, about Didn't the, somebody shoot somebody? I don't, well, I think there were some shots fired here and there, but I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean I'm not just talking about the, 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 the caning of Charles Sumner. I mean, there were other, there were many instances of violence. Uh, you know, I mean, the professor from Yale, Joanne Freeman, who's a big scholar on Alexander Hamilton, um, she actually wrote a book called Affairs of Honor, where she documented all the violence in the in the U.S. Congress, uh, basically since its inception up until uh, she wrote this 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that decade there was a busy time, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that 10 year lead up to the Civil War was absolutely terrible and uh, you know i think there's been some others i mean we're we're i don't necessarily i don't know if we're in a too much of a divisiveness right now because i think the people themselves actually have some fair agreement on many things outside of the radical hmm. people um in both parties more specifically in the republican party which i wouldn't even really consider them as part of the republican party you know but we're just in a period where the lawmakers do not care about that. We're in a period of, you know, really no integrity and just complete uh, aggressiveness toward nothing but their own power, right. uh, control, you know, above really anything, mm -hmm. um, which is a little, a little bit different than some of the other times that were divided. I do think that some of the other times that we were divided – it was at least in some times, you know, over legitimate disagreement on, you know, the fork in the road that people thought we were at and what way we should go. The Civil War is a little bit different, obviously, because there was so much, you know, like racism and let me ask you, and, a, let me ask you a question. Really stupid things, you know, wrapped up with it. But, when when the, when the when the South seceded, okay, did they still show up for con congressional okay. meetings? No, no, they they left and formed their own government. So, so we had a smaller we had a smaller Congress and a smaller Senate. Yeah, and, uh, right. Yeah. How how about the Supreme Court? Were there any people on the Supreme Court that were Southerners that quit the? I don't Supreme remember. Court? Oh, there were, but I don't remember if any justices mm -hmm. resigned and left yeah. or not. I you know I, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Um, I don't think that any did, but I could be wrong about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, it didn't, you know, it, it almost didn't matter because uh, Lincoln didn't do anything the court said anyway. <laughs> Vernon, what do you think about, uh, do you think we're heading for the big, uh, big abyss? I think one of the big differences between now and the 1850s that Josh is talking about is Citizens United. Before Citizens United, you know, you could disagree, et cetera, but after Citizens United was decided, money became so powerful in controlling who gets elected, et cetera. And there's no way to get rid of it without a constitutional amendment. And that ain't going to happen in this current environment. So I don't see an end to it. Yeah, but it just seems like, uh, yes, Mark, did you have your hand up? Did you, oh, I thought you had your hand up. You kind of went like that. I mean, I still think you had, you know, major complications even in periods like that, you know, with money. Um, you know, the railroads bought the politicians that they needed to make sure that eminent domain was used for the land that they, you know, I mean, um, you know, uh, certain things like that, you know, but I mean, it's complicated. And, you know, there's no two periods alike, you know what I mean? I mean, there's always, you know, because it's about different issues and and stuff like that it's just that you know the the elected people that we have now you know in washington i mean for all their talk about 
what the people want and all that. They they don't know because they, they're not listening to that. They're they're really not, you know, because I live in an area of the country and I travel around the country and people for the for the most part, like I said, I mean, other than the one guy on the block that literally has you know Trump stickers all over the house and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a different thing, right? But I'm just saying for the most part. People are not really talking about the things that they talk about, or if they are, they're not talking about it in the ways that they do. Yeah. You know, with like the fever pitch of, you know, if the border crisis isn't solved, you know, by like midnight, you know, we're, I mean, we're, we're just one minute to midnight away from this nuclear holocaust or something. You know, I mean, I mean, it's not. You know, they don't talk about it like that. Well, let me let me let me take us into another abyss that's happening mm-hmm. now. And and that's our our president Biden uh who supposedly has taken homework home. Uh and uh <clears throat> I know that I don't think there's a comparison with the Trump papers being at Mar-a-Lago and the Trump papers being with uh with Biden in that the preponderance of these items were were just classified. They weren't top secret, and I kept using that. See, I always think about what what kind of an argument can I make against uh, Phil if he calls, okay? And I, mm-hmm. I, I've been saying none of them were top secret, but today it turns out the one that was in uh, Pennsylvania, or Delaware, rather, mm-hmm. uh, what, uh, in his uh, Corvette, why it was in his Corvette, I have no idea. But it hits a locked garage. Uh, that one was top secret. Yeah. Well, they, you know, and the thing for for Phil or whatever, you know, with me anyway, is so I'm not going to look for some sort of, you know, excuses or whatever. I mean, I think the cases have differences. Mm-hmm. And I certainly think that one is a different level of mm-hmm. criminal activity. Yeah. But I'm not going to make any sort of excuse for Joe Biden whatsoever. I mean, it's becoming clear that many of our lawmakers, especially here recently, are very careless with this information and that it's time for that to stop. Do you think it probably and, happened with other presidents, too, and we just don't know about it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. And I mean... yeah. Look, if they want to look into it, I'm I'm fine with that. Now, you know, because we're we are looking into the ones for Trump, which we should. Yeah, but so, what they're trying to say, they're trying to the, the Republicans are trying to uh, um, uh, ameliorate uh, the uh, situation with uh, Trump yeah. by saying, "Hey, look at what Biden did." Now, that, well, that's not a good so, thing, you know. But that's not going to help their case. I mean. If yeah. that's the case, fine. Then they can go to jail together. You know, I mean, about if, you know, if that's what you want, they can share a cell. You know, I mean, that's not going to happen. But I, I mean, I'm just saying they they don't have anything there. I mean, well, let me put it. Be, let me put. I, let me I mean, put. Let me put, let me, I won't have to argue with Phil because my perspective will be that they can look into it. And if they can come out with some sort of proof that he willfully broke the law, then do what you got to do. Yeah. Do what you got to do. That's the way that it works. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, think that's why Garland, I think that's why Garland appointed a special prosecutor for the Biden documents as well, that's, just so you know, it doesn't show favoritism. Yeah. Right, and that's, you know, probably the the right thing to do. I mean, I don't think that he did anything that endangered, you know, our our. Well, here's what I don't understand. Here's what I like don't that. understand. I mean, it's not uh, right. Marjorie over here, in fact, it was getting a little filled up today, has a shredder. All right. Now, if I suddenly, I know this would be illegal, but if I suddenly found out I had taken a top secret document home by accident, yeah. rather than go through the entire problem that I would go through, guess what's going into the shredder? Yeah. Why doesn't they just shred this stuff? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, they're... Because they're totally honest. That's what? why. Yeah. You know, yes, uh, Alan. So what comes out of the shredder, somebody in the forensics can put it across a flatbed of a, of a uh, like a computer scanner, and they have software that can put that That's back if you together. get all of it, and it hasn't been spread out over many different places. And not right. the confetti ones, not the confetti shredders. 
<laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Because yeah. Betty, I have one of those. They they complain and say Biden's a you know old man doesn't even know where he's at and all that stuff. So he should just use that as his defense. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know what this was. I thought this was like a coupon for parties or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, I mean, I certainly think going forward too. You know, if this is an issue with anyone else in three or four years. These people have been very careless with this, you know, so it's obviously time that that stops. And, it's, you know, it, two or three years from now, I don't even really care who it is, party, whatever. If this is an issue, again, there's been plenty of warning. It's, I mean, time, it's time for the National yeah. Archives to simply show up and say, where yeah. are where are all our papers? Well, and, 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 and they're probably at, when they're still they're, when they're still in the White House. You know. Yeah, and there probably needs to be some strengthening of their powers, you know. But perhaps and, we've been too loosey goosey with the way we've allowed these things to be <laughs> administered. You know. You know. Yeah, I mean, and the way that a lot of these laws came to be to begin with came from crisis situations, as, as many laws and regulations do. You know, I mean, that's the big thing. You know, anytime you do any sort of you know, like legal training and safety training and things like that in the corporate world, you know, they often tell you that a lot of the things that you deal with from OSHA came because OSHA got the idea because there was an accident or a, a, a spill or an environmental issue or whatever. Mm -hmm. And these laws came about in the same way. I mean, when you take a tour of one of the presidential libraries, they typically give you the rundown on how they operate and why and what the laws are. And they're upfront about the fact that many of the laws that they what happened? They have because yeah. of things like Watergate and and things like that, for example, you know, and be, you know Richard Nixon and you know stuff. So it's probably time that we take a fresh look at the archives, mm -hmm. at the Presidential Records Acts, and things like that, and they get some more power, you know, yeah. maybe, yeah, you know, and, and then and sort of stiffen some of the penalties and stop taking excuses. You know, I'll tell you what. I'm that's all I'll tell anyone you what, ever offers up is excuses. I'll tell you what I'm tired of it is mm. it is fairly obvious. I'm not going to say he committed a crime because again, I don't want to prejudge. I don't want to pre-try uh, Donald Trump, but it looks like they have everything they need to charge him with a crime, yeah. and they're not. What are they I'm waiting right for? You know, yeah, I mean, these things take a really long time. I mean, I they shouldn't take a long time. Sometimes. You know, justice should be swift, right? Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to be swift. It should be fair, you know, more than that. But it it would be nice. No, but I think they're afraid of what I think they're afraid yeah. of. I think they're afraid of what people are going to think of them if they go out yeah. after Trump. Well, who gives a good God shit about it? Do it. No, I don't. Right? You know. Do it. I think they're terrible in not letting this guy get away with this. If they, you know, if they do whatever they're going to do to Biden, fine. But takes well, Kamala Harris would then become president. Case. But what it takes time to build a criminal case? No, it, it shouldn't take this amount of time. Do you think it's going to take the, that <clears throat> amount of time to get a criminal case against this guy who allegedly killed four people in Iowa? No, but they're Idaho. Not is it Idaho or Iowa? Is it Idaho? Idaho. Idaho. In yeah. Idaho, do you really do you really think they're gonna they they are you know how about no. how about the guys the cops that went after uh, uh, what's his name um, uh, George Floyd George Floyd thank you I need somebody always to remind me of words yeah. now uh, George Floyd uh, I mean how uh, they were convicted a year later. Yep. Okay, so I mean, it's not that justice yeah. grinds slowly. I mean, how long has it been since January six for crying out loud? Two years. In two years, exactly. Well, mm -hmm. By now, we should have some kind of an indictment. Yeah, we have nine. I agree. Yeah, I agree. We should I have some they, of those I guys for us. I, I think that the 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 government wants something because this is so high profile. Wants something really solid. So Trump's bozo attorneys can't come in and knock it down. What's more solid than the evidence that the January 6th committee handed over to us? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, come on. What's more solid than okay. the tax evasion that, that Trump committed? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know. 
Uh, that's how they got Capone, huh? That's how they exactly. got Weisselberg. You know. Uh, well, you know, I, I, that stuff is complicated to me because I don't understand some of it. I mean, you know, Weisselberg, for example, I think got six months, and then I see the headline today. I didn't read the article. I don't even know that I need to. The headline today says that the Trump uh, entity, whatever you call it, is being out of that whole deal is being forced to pay a 1.6 million dollar fine for their tax uh mistakes or whatever so this guy gets six months in jail and how much money did the government pay to prosecute it fine. how much did they it looks like that's all that came from that how much did the government uh, uh, pay to prosecute it who knows yeah. yeah i mean you know that's the problem with with that kind of stuff i mean look when you go to college, for example, you're allowed to take like these tax credits and stuff like that. And the first couple of years that you go, they're pretty large. And then when you get to like graduate school and stuff like that, they're much smaller and things. I once had an accountant that did my taxes and accidentally took the wrong exemption. And I should have known that I was getting more money back than I really thought that I should have. And like a year later, the IRS had caught it. And, I, you know, I had taken the wrong exemption, and they wanted their money, like, immediately. Hmm. I mean, you know, like, I didn't even I didn't even do it. You know, like, I literally paid a professional to do it and everything, and they made this fucking big deal about it. And here's this huge organization, and this guy gets six months, and they're going to pay a $1.6 million fine. I mean. That was I, just I, for Weisselberg's Turks, though. That, that was not that was not all of the even uh inflating values and all that crap that, oh, Trump, right, has, yeah. that mm -hmm. Trump has done the Weisselberg case was simply giving him cars and apartments and paying the tuition for his daughters and his granddaughters right. and all that crap and Weisselberg and, and, and he did not pay tax on and Weisselberg's going to prison right. what for not paying taxes right yeah, yeah. So like I said for like six months and, then and probably that's what the Trump organization is everything paying what he's for Right. The Trump organization is paying that one point six million dollars for the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but oh, well, it's just isn't it fun? But these fucking guys are never going to stop doing that shit. I mean, until it's okay. so punitive that it's not worth the risk. I mean, okay. I, I, I seriously doubt that when Weisselberg gets out of prison mm -hmm. that he's going to live like I do. I seriously doubt it. And I'm telling you right now that if you told me I could go to prison for six months and when I get out live like he does, I'll fucking do it right now. Right. <laughs> I'll just fucking hang yep. up and go. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Send me your million hey, let me, let, we, we have to stop and pause here for a very important function of this program, Ooh. and that is what is on Charlie's T-shirt tonight? Move a little closer into your camera so we can. You see. got a good one. Let's see. F equals M. MCI. DV. Well, mass you're going to have acceleration. I think I, I, think well, I know what it is. Forces equals yeah. mass times acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. traction. Force equals mass force times uh, acceleration. Now, is there is that all you wanted to say? Yeah. <laughs> may the force be with you. Oh, yeah. I see. May okay. The, okay. Force. Be with you. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Little physics, that's all. Yeah, yeah. You have, you have the best, and you never wear the same T-shirt twice. <laughs> well, you know, I have enough to go for about three or four months without repeating. Yeah, but I mean, I would love to see your closet. <laughs> I get, yeah, the whole wall. I mean, all the shirts I have just simply say 1939 on them. You mm. know, uh, that's all. I got about 10 of those. Or vintage 1939. Night <laughs> vintage 1939 or mm. made in 1939 or, you know, whatever. So 1939 original part. So how's everything down in Florida, Josh? Uh, mm. We have to, it, it, you know, my favorite state of the whole union. I just love Florida. You know how much <laughs> I love Florida. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I just go about my life, do my thing, keep yeah. my head down, what, do what, my job. You're from New York originally, right? Born and raised in Brooklyn. So what, what, when did you go down to Florida and what was the reason? Take care of my dad about 2005. 
Hmm. Oh, okay. And then, well, well what, what brought me also down here was uh, I did not survive the calling of Warner calling of Warner Brothers layoffs in 2004. Uh, and you were doing what at Warner Brothers? I was working for Warner Advanced Media Operations. I was literally making animated <laughs> graphics. You know what I did when I was living in New York. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so I did not survive that. So that that's why. For all that, all that, what's going on with Warner's now and HBO, they can go to hell. Oh yeah, you know? oh like, yeah. Well, no, yeah. I. You know what bothers me are all these companies that are are laying people off because they want to change the bottom line, and they also when they when they do that, their stock goes up. Okay, and 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 the people that get hurt are human beings who work for companies who are working to keep that company going. And quite frankly, rather than let 18,000 people go, why don't you get rid of all the people at the top when their salaries and put new people in there? Well, you know? You said something, you and Larry, when you were talking, you both said something. I'll get back to Florida. Yeah. But um, when a radio station did a format change, because you always have a programmer that comes in that can try to fix the wheel. Yeah. And shit happens, and not for the best. Mm -hmm. And that's what that always happens. It happened. It, it happened with HBO Max. Perfectly happy with it. Then yeah. you know, like you said, we're all the we're all the Warner Brothers cartoons. What happened? Yeah. Well, they didn't want. They said they didn't want to pay royalties. They don't have to pay royalties. They own Warner's. Yeah, I know, but it's mm. yeah. I think they got rid of every cartoon prior to 1947 or something. After 1947. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's not that I went there and watched every cartoon every day, but every now and then I go over there to get a, watch an old Pepe Le Pew or something like that because I'm a sexist, you know, and uh, uh, watch uh, <laughs> Sylvester and Tweety or watch uh, Claude Cat, you know, uh, and, and have a little bit of fun. But I'm not getting my money's worth now. Of course, I'm not paying for it because I get it through AT&T. Get mine through uh, my cable. If Xfinity. it isn't the cat, it's Adrian. <laughs> or Adrian and the cat. Mm. Adrian and the cat. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I'm hungry. Okay, I'm Brian. Okay, bye. Bye. Go, 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 go. Okay. He'll be through here in just a few moments, Adrian. Mm. He's a little early. Yeah. You know what we did last night? Speaking of being hungry. If I can change the subject here for a second, uh, yeah. and then we'll get back to it. Last night, Marjorie ordered some from some company. I think it's like Fresh Direct has a secondary <laughs> company where they send you the makings for the food and then you cook it. Oh, now, I don't know why that's costing me as much money as if I ordered food from Fresh Direct. <laughs> but that was meals from the Fresh Direct where they're already made or whatever. They just take a little warming up. So Marjorie got two of them. She had two of them. It was a free trial offer or something. And so we both cooked separate meals on the uh, together. And we made these things. And I sat there going, why am I making this? You know, doesn't Fresh Direct, can't they just make it themselves and give it to me? I mean, what, the, what, what is with that? I don't understand that part of it. Was it good? Mine was, hers was so-so. Mine was a penny pasta mm. thing mm. with a bunch of hamburger in it and stuff like mm. that, yeah. But it, and it was pretty good. Marjorie said she liked it. You know, I said, well, I made it, you know. But you're not really making it. They're, still, they're giving you all the pieces. Oh, here's one scallion. Okay, chop that in there. Here's, here's a half an onion, you know, chop that in there. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, but uh, it, was, it was, the only thing nice about it was the two of us felt we were accomplishing something together. And both our meals, oddly enough, we were using the same stove and everything, but both our meals pretty much were ready at the same time, which was kind of amazing, too. Mm. Microwave. But anyway, mentioning that and going back, to, yes, what were you going to say, Brian? I was going to change the subject also. Oh, okay, what were you going to change it to? <clears throat> Did you see Mel Brooks is coming out with uh, History of the World Part Two? Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, they started playing the trailers yesterday and today. Thirty but years. I, 
I don't know. History of the World Part 1. I mean, how, how are those going to lie now and then try to do the same thing again this this in this age? Well, I never thought that History of the World Part 1 Part 1 was one was of any good. was was any good. Yeah. I, I never felt that was one of his better pictures. You know. But uh, to make fun of those eras, you know, those times and then I don't think it's too politically correct in these days and now in number 2. So, yeah, and, and is he is he actually directing it? I mean, he's awfully. I mean, I'm I, I'm saying this is an old person. Okay, he's really old. He's like, wait a minute, uh, Echo. How old is Mel? Echo, how old is Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks is ninety six years old. Ninety six years 96. old. Wow. Whoa. Listen, I I can barely do a radio show at eighty three. I mean, <laughs> directing a movie at eighty six. Yeah, ninety six. Ninety six. Excuse me. Yeah. See, that's why I can't do it at eighty three. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I mean, it. It. I just. I. 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 I don't know. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't really care. But anyway, back to the uh, the eighteen hundred eighteen thousand people that are letting off at Amazon. Hey, um, why don't you just get rid of the guys, the head of the company? You know. <laughs> or have him give up some of his money to keep those people, you know. Let I I hate the fact that the idea is you hi, you fire people who all they've been doing is doing their jobs, because that's when the top guys talk. They talk to the next level, and then they say, "We need to make cuts. Where are we going to do it?" They're you, not going to say, "Oh, fire you, me." You, you know why you want to be higher up in a company is when they do layoffs. They start at the bottom and work their way up. Yeah. And if you're at the very top, you're insulated. You, you know, uh, uh, if I worked at a radio station and I was doing a show, then the program director could fire me, okay? To save his job, he could say, oh, Alex isn't doing a good job and the ratings aren't good because it's Alex's fault. Mm -hmm. And then he's insulated and he gets to fire three people before he gets fired, and then the general manager gets to fire three program directors before he yeah. gets fired. In other words, there's yeah. an insulation process that goes on. But I mean, firing 18,000 people when, you know, the problems, if Amazon has them, goes all the way to the top. You start at the top and work your way down. Yes, Vernon. How much of that is because uh, Amazon warehouses are utilizing more and more robots yeah. to do things that people used to do look at the uh, look at the mm. automation that's happened just at the grocery store with self-checkout yep. my home my home depot used to have six lanes of cashiers now if they have a rush hour they might have three lanes with people manning cashiers and they have four self-checkout stations where one person monitors that oh they put in self-checkout stations at my grocery store but i never use them I and never this is the thing that Andrew La Andrew Yang was talking about during the uh, 2016 election is automation is what's eliminated a lot of the jobs in this country. It isn't shipping jobs to China. It isn't shipping jobs to Mexico. It's automation. Mm -hmm. I think you may have a great point there. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure automation has a lot to do with the layoffs at Amazon. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, I mean, um, uh, but I mean, I just... It, but and then they've got these people. They've got these people delivering Amazon, who I don't know what their relationship is to the company. If they're hired, they subcontractors. Subcontractor. That's yeah. what I figured. They're not. They're not. They don't belong to the uh, breadth and width of the employees at uh, at Amazon. So the eighteen thousand that were fired weren't these contracted people. It's okay. the same for FedEx. The only difference is UPS. I think the people that deliver UPS packages actually work for the company. Well, you know why UPS they work for the company? I think UPS part of the reason is they also own the company. Because years ago, the people who worked at UPS, if I'm not mistaken, and Brian seems to be agreeing with me, uh, were allowed to buy the company. And they yeah. brought bought FedEx. And so the, the FedEx is owned by the employees. So. UPS is the yes. only UPS. delivery company. I mean, is, UPS, I mean. UPS. Yeah, UPS. I think so. My friend worked for UPS like 30, 30 years ago or something when he was really young, and that's I think that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, Alan? UPS is the only delivery company that's union nationwide, worldwide. 
Really? FedEx isn't? FedEx is not. That's why your package gets lost all the time with FedEx. Well, I mean, an Amazon, you know, not to, uh, to, I ordered a heavy package, right? Yeah. Watch, they're not going to bring it up to my door. Of course not. They only bring the, the light packages, the little envelope up to my door. Right. For Christmas time. If they, if they even yeah. bring it out of the rain. What? You'll be lucky if they bring it out of the rain. Fortunately, I live in a house where you can just walk up and, and drop it on the porch. Of course, they usually drop it right in front of the screen door, so you can't get out. you got to go around. <laughs> Package is stupid. Amazon. Oh. My guys throw like a frisbee, and I see him on the ring. Mm -hmm. I see him on the ring throwing that stuff up to the front porch. Mm -hmm. like, well, you've seen the new the new guys who are delivering Amazon now. They've got these uh, these big huge yellow orange baskets or something that they roll around the neighborhood. No, I've seen, yeah. seen those. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I can say that all of my deliveries for Amazon have been from Amazon delivery. <laughs> They mm -hmm. pretty well eliminated UPS, which was their prime carrier. You mean and, USPS? No, U. Uh, well, uh, uh, UPS. UPS. Yeah, USPS. I, um, I at one point I got very mad at the delivery of my <clears throat> Amazon packages, and I told them I do not want it delivered by by a FedEx. I don't want it delivered by USPS. That's what I told them. So they said, okay, just be UPS. And they, all the things came UPS. And the reason I didn't want them is because USPS was always screwing it up. Mm. Either that or they oh. try to smash a giant package into my post postal box, you know? Uh, so that, that, that was a no-goer. And then with Amazon, we have four buildings here in our courtyard, four entrances to, the, to different what we call buildings, but they're all the same building. And um, I have specifically put on my packages, you know, my address, building three. Where do you think some of those packages wind up? <laughs> building, building one. Four. One. Building <clears throat> one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's just maddening. This gets mm -hmm. maddening. Uh, but anyway, so what I'm saying is, though, I just don't understand why, you know, these companies, I mean, how many, how many do they lay off at Twitter? You know how many do they lay? I mean, any all of these companies are laying off people like it's it's uh, it's a mana from heaven that's been given to them. Mm. You know, but what do we do? And so you you got have gotten a case where you got let off, right, uh, uh, Mark? Uh, yeah. And 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 what did you do to get fired? Was it anything wrong that, or part of the job you weren't doing? No, they. I'll tell you what happened. Uh, you remember the AOL Time Warner merger? Oh, that one. that one. That one, yeah. Well, this was the fallout. And rather than sell off divisions that weren't making money, let's sell the profitable ones. So it was like a shit show. And, uh, yeah, you can thank Dick Parsons for that one. You know, Dick Parsons owns a restaurant near me here. Well, he can go to <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, here here's the story of uh, that I always loved, and I've told the story a couple of times here. My friend Shecky was walking past the the then building that they were building, the Time Warner building, right? Uh, and uh, it said on the front of it, AOL Time Warner. And Shecky said to the guy who was with him, uh, he said. Um, I guarantee you that by the time that building is finished, AOL will not be on that building's name. Mm. And he was absolutely right. I mean, that was the quickest merger and demerger in history. Wow. You remember when that happened, guys? Mm. Yeah. A company but that was... A lot of companies that are, you know, the, Let's the see your whole largest face. company yeah. and, the, and the smaller one, yeah. and they just suck them up. And they have only have one company instead of three. Yeah, but I mean, AOL, in this case, I never could quite figure out how AOL, which was not a, you know, a big company, was buying up a big company. You know, yeah. a company that was certainly big enough to be able to build that building in, in uh, Columbus Circle, you know. Uh, but sure enough, that's exactly what happened. You know, by the time it was finished, by the time they topped it off, 
AOL Time Warner no longer existed. <laughs> so, you know. Well, well, you know. So the, the original owners and executives were were getting a, a better deal. Mm-hmm. Shut down the place. Well, talk, the, talk to Josh uh, to Mark about about uh, Dick Parsons. Uh, this was a guy who was the head of the company who really led it to destruction. He's the one that did the AOL t merger, and then when he got through, they you know he he left, and I get he came down to my neighborhood here and bought up a couple of restaurants. Men's his golden parachute, probably. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, a platinum oh, yeah. parachute. <laughs> platinum parachute. Yeah. Yeah, but he bought Minton's, which was a longtime jazz club here. And then there was also a restaurant around the corner that he bought as well. He still owns them, I think. Mm. You know, but uh, uh, it just, you know, it just amazes me. I mean, I, I always think that there, there are not enough laws protecting the workers against these kind of things, against mergers and, and acquisitions, because it always suits these companies. If they just buy them and they spend too much for them and they need to make money uh, fast. I mean, look at, look at what Warner Brothers did. They, there was a movie they made. Uh, they spent about $100,000 to make it called The Bat, Bat Girl. And um, they never released it. They said, it isn't good enough. We're not releasing it. And uh, they took a, a loss on it. Mm -hmm. not, they, they're never even going to release it. It's not going to wind up in a, a, in a you know, in a, on a, a streaming service near you. Uh, it, they just said, uh, we're, we'll take the loss on it. That was the first thing they did. That was their first move. That and a couple of other things. And then they dropped TV shows like crazy out of HBO Max. And pretty soon, HBO Max isn't going to be worth subscribing to. You know, so they're they're ruining their business there. But what can I say? But a, lot, a lot of companies are buying another company, and they're going in it, seeing what they can do to make money and what they can do to to consolidate jobs and responsibilities and stuff. They're going into that. They're not saying I'm going to buy that company and then just do the same thing. Well, you know what they're doing at HBO Max. How, how many of you watch any shows on Discovery Channel or any of the Discovery channels? Mm, occasionally. They're going, to, they're going to merge all their prop stuff with Warner's, with, you know, mm. HBO. And it's going to be, just be called Max. Mm. I don't want those <laughs> goddamn shows, you know? They, uh, it just, and, and, and a company like Discovery, it just, I don't know, you know, I mean, I love movies and I love the history of movies. And certainly the thing I love, I love Warner Brothers because it's so iconic as a motion picture organization. And to have it be Warner Brothers Discovery. I mean, come on. Just call it Warner Brothers and start making your Discovery shows and calling them Warner Brothers shows, okay? But don't, hmm. don't, don't give me your, I uh, just, I give up, you know? Am I just an old fart? Yes, you are, Alex. Okay, I'll accept that. <laughs> A trick question. It's a trick question. Yes. No. no you didn't give me a chance to answer. Uh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I got my answer from from Charlie. Anyway, well, I have a question. I have a question about the Golden Globes. Did anybody watch the Golden Globes? Yeah. Well, they they talked about some shows that uh, won Golden Globes, and I went and watched some of these that I had not watched, like Abbott Elementary, yeah. White Lotus, and I'm scratching my head saying. Why are these people so in love with these shows? I thought they suck. <laughs> you got to wait till season two. Season one's right. Yeah, painful. but you got to remember, this was the new Golden Globes, and they had to have black winners and gay winners and mm. women winners and uh, I don't know, uh, Martian winners, and uh, they had to spread the wealth around. So, anyway, hey, listen, there's our theme. Hey, nice way to end the week. Nice bunch of people, Jeff. Good to see you again. A lot uh, of people watching too. Me too. Huh? A lot of people watching too. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, mm -hmm. Josh, thank you. Uh, Charlie, thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Brian. Thank you to Vernon Nunn. Mark, you should do this more often. You know, <laughs> work schedule. <laughs> that's I know. All I know. But if you can do it, we love you. You know. 
And, of course, uh, Alan, nice seeing you again. And uh, we'll see you next week. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel. Thanks for joining us, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll uh, we'll be back again, uh, let's see here, on Monday with uh, the pop-up show, and it'll be on Facebook, okay? Uh, and then we'll be back again on Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her. Of course, tell her I love her, all right? Okay, bye, everybody. Bye.